Uh, Luke, you got an or at quarterback. Could you talk a little bit about your thinking that went into that, and who will actually take the first snap on Saturday? Well, I'm not sure that uh, listed there how it is exactly with the or, but uh, if we were taking the first snap right now, Joe would probably take the first snap. Uh, just talking with those guys, talking with the offensive staff, um, we know we're going to need them both. And the whole idea is we want to make sure that we can put them out there in front of 106,000 and see how guys respond. Uh, there's a lot of things that don't say or on that uh, depth chart, but are or. Um, I know obviously the only one you really care about at times is the quarterback position. Um, but again, we're, we're trying to create competition. We're trying to see how this team gels together, what, uh, what the team needs, what the offense needs. Um, so I think that we're just trying to bring light to both of them. We understand that we're going to need both of them. We sat down with both of those guys and make sure they understood that, that throughout this entire year, we're going to need you both. And how you guys work together, how we work together as a staff, offensively, defensively, special teams, um, probably will be the focus will be on the quarterback spot. But uh, we need to make sure that all of us are working together. <laughs> You know what? We, I haven't seen any, any negative effects. I know that uh, deep down in, uh, communicate with each one of those guys. Kind of, they came in, make sure they expressed uh, how they felt and that they were going to battle and continue to compete. So I, I felt good about that. I felt good about those guys handling the situation and the role. Um, it's something that obviously naturally happens. Um, it happens at every position. You know, the thing is, it's just a little mo more visual at the quarterback spot because uh, there isn't as much rolling and as much substitution. Um, but it happens everywhere. So you're concerned with all those guys that all of a sudden look up in the third team and maybe doing some scout or some exchange, uh, some exchange situations. But um, how we handle those kinds of things, I think, will determine how this team really gels together. Luke, real uh, hard-hitting question here, but fans seem to be curious about this. What are you going to wear on game days? <laughs> Whatever my wife lays out. <laughs> um, you know what? It, that's not something I put a whole lot of thought into. Uh, you know, we'll be doing signals from the defensive side, so uh, usually we're wearing something black just to make sure that we can the guys that are signaling or distinguish the difference between the other guys on the sideline. Something you're going to wear every week. Yeah, I would imagine. I mean, I think if you look back through the years. I've, what I've worn is very consistent. I know it might be just like the quarterback position. All of a sudden, it's a little bit more focal. Well, somebody's focused, but not mine, to be honest with you. Um, so, you know, whatever Lou kind of maybe has for us, the, the, the defensive staff will be wearing, or the guys that might be signaling, um, you know, I'll wear on Saturday. You know, Mikey determines a lot of what you do anyway, what you wear. So, <laughs> I'm sure they'll have a little say in whatever that is. Look, what was it about Joe's performance that caused you to give him the, the nod? What knot is that? The, the, the top of the oar? Top of the oar. Top of the oar. You know, it's leadership. It's leadership. It's also, uh, you know, I think just what this team, uh, where we were at the time, uh, you know, I think he's done a good job. He's done a really good job through camp. I've been impressed um, with the things we've asked him to do and what he's done. Um, that doesn't mean I haven't been impressed with Braxton as well. That's why I'm a, we've been impressed enough with him to list him in the oar category. Um, but again, the, the whole idea is that we want to continue to create competition and to make sure those guys understand by saying or that we need both. And I think that's, to me, the most important thing. There's other guys that aren't listed as or on there, but we want them to make sure they understand that they're or as well. Do you have a breakdown in mind on when Braxton will come in? I'm going to More on that. I mean, I'm not sure we're ready to, to say exactly what it is just yet, um, but those guys understand the situation. They know what, how to handle it. Um, they know that there's going to be uh, some rolling and some substitution, and um, most importantly, it's how you handle those things. That's the, everything's a test you tell, and how you handle those things, whether it's Saturday afternoon, how you handle the blitz, how you handle the rolling situation, how you take uh, advantage of the opportunities you're given. Luke, uh, what's the status of Jamal Barry, and then how do you see the running back rotation going out uh, this first weekend? There's another few oars right there. Uh, Jamal uh, has not practiced uh, this week. Right now he's still got a little bit of a, of a hamstring, so we'll see. Uh, he is uh, questionable probably still to this date. Um, and again, but those, those running backs, we, we've got a, to me, we've got some talent. We've got some depth. Um, we're going to have to see. Those guys are going to get opportunities. How you take advantage of your opportunities, I think I'm sure you've heard me say it a million times, how you take advantage of your opportunities will just determine how many more opportunities you have. Um, so we'll see how that all works out. We don't have it laid out, scripted. Exactly, um, but we know we got a lot of opportunities for guys, and sometimes everything, everything is uh, like I said, is a test. Nothing goes unnoticed. How you perform in the special teams as uh, as maybe the second um, 
tailback and determine maybe how many more carries you might or how many more opportunities you might give the tailback position. So uh, we know we need every single one of them. You know, how many times they carry the football, we're not going to sit there and dwell on that, but how many times they run down on a kickoff or do something else, I think is what we're focused. Luke, the, uh, the second team offensive line on the depth chart was walk-ons and true freshmen. Just where do you feel about the depth of the offensive line at this point, and specifically, what's Corey Lindsley's status at this point? Um, Depth-wise, you know, that's obviously always a concern. I think you know when you have some injuries, you have some guys that are, that are going to be um, going to be out. Uh, you, you, you have worries. Um, there's, there's not unlike other positions as well. So we do have a depth uh, issue right there. We have an idea. Sometimes you have five guys and you have two other ones that could play some different positions. That's, I think, what Coach Bowman's done a great job of. He's always had guys that could go in and bump them around and not just to say because you're listed as the backup right tackle that if the right tackle goes down, the next guy goes in. No, the next best guy goes in. And we've said that several times on defense. I guys ask me all the time, hey, if the middle linebacker goes down, does that mean I go in? No, the next best guy goes in. We teach it as a, as a scheme and a system so that we can have some people that can be able to interchangeable. Um, yes, that puts more uh, pressure on guys to make sure they understand not just memorization of a, of a position, but um, the core will not be available for the, for the first game. Uh, I don't know that he'll be available for the second as well. Coach. A lot of people um, around the country will be watching this game, um, wondering what they'll they'll see in light of all that's gone on uh, this this off season with the football program. Is there any kind of message that you want to send with the team's performance this Saturday? Yeah, that our actions will speak for our for us, and I think that's you know I think every week we're not looking at any different. Every week, no matter what year it is, there's going to be a lot of people watching Ohio State. That's the beauty. That's what uh, that's what the history and the tradition has brought of this place. So um, we haven't focused on any more people watching or any other thing um, than what is normal. Um, the thing we focused on, hey, uh, we've had a lot of talk. We've had time to talk. There's been a lot of talk, but talk is that you know our performance will be what we want um, to define us. Our actions, our performance on Saturday afternoon, to me, will be what we want people to talk about. Whether we talk about it after the game, we have to do those things. We understand that. Um, but we're hoping that our performance and our actions speak louder than what we say as words. Yeah, Luke, over here. One of the things, you know, players can practice their position and their techniques. How does a head coach prepare to be a head coach on game day? How do you go about, you know, uh, putting yourself into strategy decisions, those kind of game day decisions. How do you prepare, you know, in getting ready for that? There's a lot of things you have a hard time preparing for until you actually do them. And I think this is probably one of those things. But I think the best situations that I've been in is it's pretty much since I've been there been a collaborative issue. And I think that's, you know, been what's coach's way. So there's been a lot of decisions that were made that were made over top of the headset, you know, where you come on and say, hey, defense, what do you guys want to do in this situation, you know? And you all were in it together. You kind of talk about it on Thursdays before your games. You talk about it on Friday nights, how you're going to handle certain situations. Um, but ultimately, until you've made those decisions in that split second, um, I don't know that you can practice them. I mean, you can play some video games or <laughs> watch some film or, you know, do those kinds of things that, that you would think, but, you know, when the heat is on, the pressure's on, you know, the decisions have to be made. And until you do them, um, I don't know any other way to practice them. We say the same thing to some quarterbacks. And you can practice all you want, but until you get from 106,000, how are you going to perform? Um, so it will still be a collaborative issue. Obviously, there's a lot of uh, great experience on our staff, you know, just like there always has been. And when situations arise, obviously, you have some time to, to you know, communicate with them. But ultimately, you know, when it comes down to it, you've got to make a decision.